डेयर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू ऑनलाइन क्लासेस बाय नासिर इरफान दिस टाइम अराउंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल पोइम कंपोज्ड बाय फैज अहमद फैज एंड द पोइम इज स्पीक अप इट्स एक्चुअली फॉर क्लास टेंथ एंड इट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोइम फ्रॉम द एग्जामिनेशन परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल Uh, as far as the poet is concerned uh, faiz ahmed faiz was actually an urdu poet who was born in sialkot in 1911 uh, sialkot the then in pakistan uh, now in pakistan actually we can say the modern urdu poetry was incomplete in fact is incomplete without him without his contribution as he was one of the greats of his times faiz ahmed faiz uh, as already said was born in sialkot modern poetry is said to be especially modern urdu poetry is said to be incomplete without the contribution of faiz ahmed faiz because he was one of the greatest figures as far as the urdu poets of his times were concerned at the time at his uh, peak uh, when he was a young Uh, guy when he was a good poet when he started to develop a good poet he used to be a journalist and a broadcaster and so was a famous uh, figure during the british rule uh, being journalist and being broadcaster he was very much moved by the suppression of british uh, cruel rulers and so he fought for the rights of the poor and for his contribution towards literature his social services he was nominated he was in fact twice nominated for nobel peace prize as far as this poem speak up is concerned speak up is taken from faiz ahmed faiz's collection of poems naqsh e faryadi which was published in 1941 so we can say the poem speak up is written somewhere before 1941 Uh, written during the Brit- uh, final phase of cruel british rulers where poors were suppressed and so uh, faiz ahmed faiz started uh, supporting and started uh, talking about the rights of the poor people helping them as faiz ahmed faiz believed there should be a classless society there should be no high no low no rich no poor no uh, higher caste no lower caste so he was of the opinion that there should be a classless society and everybody should be treated equal with uh, without having bias on the basis of some meaningless differentiations his poetry is an emblem of humanism a mark a landmark a symbol of humanism because he used to write uh, for the poor people he used to fight in fact for the poor be- uh, poor people for the rights of the poor people he was deeply touched by the poor poverty stricken people and during british rule when indian people were treated badly uh, they were not given the higher posts they were uh, only uh, mean to acquire the low profile jobs and then speak up is one of the beautiful poems that is to express to defy that oppression to oppose that oppression in fact it was an effort to give courage to co- courage to the courage less it was uh, in fact it was an effort to give courage to the uh, feared people and it was uh, supposed to give voice to the voiceless who used to uh, fear who used to uh, who were afraid of uh talking about are having their rights who were not able to talk about their rights so let's discuss the poem in some detail and then read the poem as well the poem says speak up for your lips are not sealed and your words are still your own this upright body is yours speak while your soul is still your own look there in that smithy it's red on fire's flames the padlocks are already opening their mouths and each fetter is skirting around speak up now for time's running out before your body and mind fade away 
tell us for truth is not dead yet speak whatever you have to say now let me discuss it in some detail again speak up for your lips are not sealed and your words are still your own this upright body is yours speak while your soul is still your own in the whole stanza in the stanza the poet uh, faiz ahmed faiz says speak up for your lips are not sealed he requests his countrymen he calls upon his countrymen he calls upon the people of india that they should speak what they want to speak they have their own lips your lips are your own, uh, for your lips are not sealed they have not been stopped from speaking something and your words are still your own and they have the power they have not to borrow lips from others to speak they have their own lips they have upright bodies they have their own lips and the words they have are their own they are not supposed to bring it from others they are not supposed to lend it lend them from others this upright body is your yours he requests he urges he calls upon us calls upon indians at the time that this upright body this strong body is yours it's not somebody else speak while your soul is still your own he says to the people he requests to the people that this soul is your own this life is your own why are you not getting up and speak he requests people to speak up against the oppression of the british rulers for and fight for their right uh, and fight for their rights look there in that smithy it's red on fire's flames the padlocks are already opening their mouths and each fighter is skitting around in this stanza the poet faiz ahmed faiz makes us understand he wants us to understand that look there in that smithy smithy means the smith shop actually he wants us to realize the smith shop to know to realize the environment within the smith shop actually he compares the whole india whole british rule to the smithy to that smith shop it's red on fire flames where there are red fire flames the padlocks are already opening their mouths here the smithy the blacksmith shop stands for the situation the freedom fighters have created for the freedom of their motherland the red one and fire flames stand for their boiling courage there is courage inside them but they are not able to reflect it they are not supposed to reflect it they are afraid of reflecting it the padlocks are already opening their mouths the padlocks the chains and fetters are the symbols of slavery the chain the padlocks the fetters are the symbols of slavery he wants us to break those pad to break those chains and to say something in favor of your country in favor of your uh, rights in against the oppression of the british rulers speak up now for time is running out before your body and mind fade away tell us for truth is not dead yet speak whatever you have to say here the poet wants to say he calls upon his countrymen 
to speak now or it will be too late because the time is running out we are wasting the precious time before your body and mind fade away he says us that the time is running out before your body before your mind fades away before it becomes unable to speak tell us father truth is not dead yet when you are able to speak when your body is yours when your mind is yours why are you not speaking up speak up because this time around everything is there for you and it's yours speak whatever you have to say he urges deeply forcefully that in order to break those chains in order to achieve freedom for india you have to come up you have to struggle you have to fight you have to speak in fact the whole beautiful poem is about the freedom struggle of india where he urges his countrymen to come up to speak to fight because they have got the body they have got the mind they have got the strength and the situation is ripe the situation is sound the situation is profound as it has been created by the freedom fighters and now we only have to follow the path and to support them so that the british cruel rule may get vanished may be ended as far as the central idea or the theme of the poem is this poem is written before 1941 when in india there was a british rule the british were cruel rulers and op- oppressed indians they were as already discussed many times in during the lecture they were cruel rulers and they were hard on indians they suppressed indians indians had not the courage to speak against the british rule because they were suppressed they were uh, afraid of the cruelty of those british rulers so fez tried to ignite and fill their hearts with courage actually it was an effort by fez ahmed fez to ignite to to awaken the people of india to fight for their rights to show some courage to support the other freedom fighters who are already fighting for it he said they have body lips soul and should use them all against british oppression oppression he requests indian people he requests his countrymen to come up for to come up and support the freedom fighters in order to achieve in order to get freedom for india only then the fetters of slavery or the chains of slavery can be broken in order to become to make our indian people free in the poem as i have already read there were poetic devices used these all have some dual identifications there smithy the black smith shop refers to the situation the freedom fighters have created for the freedom of india this smithy or the smith shop has been used as image as well as metaphor over here as this has been directly compared to the situation created by the freedom fighters within india against the british rulers the red one and the fire flames stand for the boiling courage chains and fetters reflect our slavery which are to be broken so red one and the fire flames have been compared to the boiling courage these have been used as metaphors over there and chains and fetters reflect our slavery there these are also used as metaphors over there in the poem which reflect the slavery of indian people to the british rulers simply they reflect the struggle of freedom in a symbolic way Sim- simply we can say the metaphors like smithy the red oven the fire flame the fire flames chains and fetters they have been used as the symbols to reflect the struggle of indian people against british rulers agar aapko hamara ye video pasand aaya hai to ise like aur share zarur kijiye aur ha hamare channel ko subscribe aur follow karna mat bhuliyega